It's been 50 years since the contraceptive pill was introduced and it remains the most widely used form of contraception in the developed world. It was a relatively safe way for women to prevent unwanted pregnancy, yet it's still being used suboptimally according to the experts who say approximately one in two pregnancies in the US each year are unwanted. So what's happening with the pill and what's changed in 50 years? Big differences uh, have occurred since the pill was first introduced 50 years ago. 50 years ago, the amount of estrogen in the pill was roughly 15 or 20 times higher than it is in the pills today. 150 micrograms of an estrogen were now in the 10 to 20 microgram range. Along with this has been a substantial reduction in the risk of venous thromboembolism or blood clots. In fact, it's dropped by a factor of two to three fold. So the risk of women developing blood clot, taking the birth control pill is roughly two to 14 cases per 100,000 users per year. So again, an exceedingly low risk. What about the risk of breast cancer? Uh, the most recent study, which I was fortunate to be involved with, basically showed that among women in the reproductive age group who took oral contraceptives on to roughly age 55, there was no increase in risk of breast cancer by being an oral contraceptive user. Our challenges are not so much the use of the pill, but again, having methods that reduce the unintended pregnancy rate in this country, which is as high as 50%. So what have we learned about contraception in the last 50 years? Well, I think we've learned that many of the methods are very safe and effective. That said, the ability of women to appropriately use them and effectively use them is highly variable. That's why you have a 50%, uh, shall we say, unintended pregnancy rate. 50% seems unbelievable. Is there anything available that could be used more effectively? I think the use of so-called long-acting reversible contraception may be an approach that may be helpful. And that's the use of things like intrauterine devices, implants, or an injectable that you would give every three months. The, these are much more forgiving methods in that you don't have to remember to use something at the time of intercourse, nor do you have to re remember to use something every single day. And this may be one way of tackling the unintended pregnancy rate. Who should use the pill and who shouldn't? So for example, older women who smoke, older women who have hypertension that's not well controlled or have diabetes particularly if there's vascular changes, women who are substantially obese, women who have migraine particularly with aura as they age and we sort of use age 35 as a cutoff, it's sort of an arbitrary number but that's what's been used over the years. These are the sorts of women that probably would do better to use a different method. You might add to it women who have family histories of uh, very frequent clots among, let's say, their mothers, sisters, and so forth. That may be a marker for some sort of underlying coagulation disorder. These are also people that probably should avoid it. And clearly smoking over the age of 35. Uh, actually, we should do everything we can to get people to stop smoking in a much earlier age group. But once you reach 35 and you still won't give up the cigarettes, then I think that you probably need to use something other than combination hormonal products. If you look at people who correctly take it every day, uh, the risk of pregnancy is really less than 1%. Is there any risk from the pill to women's future fertility? The data that has been uh, studied over the years basically show that women who stop the oral contraceptive do not have increased rates of infertility that in any way could be related to the birth control pill. So if being on the pill means people aren't using condoms for contraception, does that mean that they're practicing less safe sex? Well, I think the whole issue of safe sex, I think clearly it's what we, people used to call the belts and suspenders. Uh, you use the oral contraceptive because of its highly efficacious nature in preventing pregnancy, but you need to counsel women particularly uh, if they do not have uh, uh, knowledge or have multiple partners of, of what their STD status is to use condoms. What about the use of the pill in the developing world? It has been estimated there are between 30 and 40 million unintended pregnancy in the less developed world. Uh, and again, a lot of this relates to access, the inability to provide uh, contraceptives to these individuals. It's important, too, that we address this. For example, uh, not having safe contraceptive met methods and having pregnancy ensue 
uh, is in fact a major public health problem. In certain countries of sub-Saharan Africa, the lifetime risk that a mother who has a pregnancy will die somewhere in pregnancy is in the neighborhood of 1 in 30. You look at a country like the United States, that risk is less than 10 per 100,000 pregnancies. Whoa!